Hi, in this video I want to introduce you to problem solving. Students often are in awe, if not downright afraid of so-called word problems. This trepidation, I believe, is rooted primarily in a lack of a straightforward strategy for solving problems. To solve a problem, you must first model it. Of course, you have to read it first and make sure you understand, not entirely, but to a certain satisfactory degree, what you've read. So once you have read the problem and you are satisfied, then you need to model this problem. This often means creating some visual representation of the problem, wherein what seems a unique problem is reduced to very familiar shapes that you can work with easily enough. This first step is what we will look at with the example that follows. It's not our intention at this point to solve the problem per se. We only want to look at how we model a problem. Modeling a problem allows us to get a clearer view of what steps need to be taken to solve it. Develop this habit of solving problems by first modeling them and you are off to a good start in physics and related engineering disciplines. I would even dare say that this approach is universal and applicable, perhaps in some modified way, to all disciplines. So we're going to start with a simple problem involving moving walkways, common in many big airports. Many people stop walking when they get on the moving walkway and simply let themselves be taken along. Relative to the walkway, they are at rest, but relative to the floor, they move with a velocity equal to that of the walkway. However, very often we find people keep walking at the same pace when they get on the walkway. So look at these people walking, they are walking at the same pace as they were walking before. These people are moving even faster relative to the floor. So let's look at the following problem. A man in an airport walks at a brisk pace of 3 miles per hour. He then comes upon a moving walkway moving in the same direction as he is and at 5 miles per hour relative to the floor. Without breaking pace, he walks onto it. How fast relative to the floor does he move while on the walkway? So the man keeps on walking at the same pace when he gets on the moving walkway. So we need to look and see exactly what it is that we have here in the problem. At this point where they tell you he's moving at 3 miles per hour, that is his speed relative to the, to the floor, to the ground. However, he keeps walking at this pace when he gets on the walkway, which means then that for the purposes of our problem, while on the walkway, his speed relative to the walkway is still 3 miles per hour because he hasn't changed his pace. So we'll use this to represent the velocity of the man relative to the walkway. Now they tell you that the walkway is moving at 5 miles per hour. They tell you it's relative to the floor. So this is a symbol we'll use for the walkway relative to the floor. And they want to know how fast the man is moving relative to the floor. So then this is what is being asked for. So to find this, what we need to remember is that the velocity of the man relative to the floor is going to be equal to his velocity relative to the walkway plus the velocity of the walkway relative to the floor. In other words, to get his velocity relative to the floor, you have to add to his velocity relative to the walkway the velocity of the walkway relative to the floor. So if you were to symbolize these, this could be the this would be the velocity relative to the walkway of the man relative to the walkway and this would be the velocity of the walkway relative to the floor and this is the sum of these two vectors so let's repeat that the velocity of the man relative to the floor is equal to the velocity of the man relative to the walkway plus the velocity of the man the velocity of the walkway relative to the floor so we know to add vectors this is the velocity of the man relative to the walkway and to this we add the velocity of the walkway relative to the floor. And that's going to give us, when we add these two, that's going to give us then the velocity of the man relative to the floor. So these two, the sum of these two is equal to this. Another way we could write this is like this. So we're using the tip-to-tail rule. So the resultant goes from the tail of the first to the tip of the second. We could also do it like this, but then this covers up the two original vectors. So normally we just put it 
underneath like this or on top. So you don't really have to put this equal sign like I have it here, but I just wanted to emphasize that that's what's going on here. So I just rearranged it here so it, so it looks like the formula. So the velocity of the man relative to the floor is equal to the velocity of the man relative to the walkway plus the velocity of the walkway relative to the floor. This is the important thing. We want to model the um, problem. So this here, these two vectors shown like this, pretty much models the problem. We've gone ahead and answered it. Um, and, and this is pretty easy now. This is going to be, this has a magnitude of 5, this one, and this one has a magnitude of, of 3. So his velocity relative to the walk, to the floor is going to be 8 miles per hour. Now, you probably could have done this very intuitively. I mean, it's like common sense, you know. And, but it is very important that you amplify your powers of intuition, that your intuitive skills need to, need to grow. And what I want you to get from this is that whenever you're faced with a problem involving three vectors and its relative motion, no matter how complex it might seem, it's basically this that you're doing. Only that the vectors may be pointing in different directions. And so the summation won't be as simple as simply adding up these numbers. So remember this, right? Whenever you're solving a problem that's a bit more difficult than this, use this as your foundation. Um, in GeoGebra, you, we can just, we can also see, once you model a problem in GeoGebra, very often GeoGebra can then do the mathematics for you. So here we can just see the vectors, the, the expressions for the vectors. So this is five zero degrees, three zero degrees. And of course the answer then, is 80 degrees. Okay, so let's look at a slight variation of this problem. Bye for now.